Try to gather your mind in from wherever it's been wandering. Because that's the whole problem, this wandering on. That's the meaning of the Pali word, samsara. We tend to think of samsara as a place, but it's not a place, it's a process, it's something we do. We wander here, wander there. And if you were to draw a map of our wanderings, it'd be pretty aimless. And so as we're meditating, it's not a question of trying to get out of one place and go to another place. It's learning to stop a particular process, this process of wandering aimlessly around. Because as we're wandering, we're also creating the place where we wander. So when we stop the process, the, the place falls apart, too. At least our experience of the place falls apart. Which means we, a lot of things we just leave undone. Many of us have a compulsion that when, once you start certain things, you want to see them all the way through to the end. And the problem with the world, the problem with this wandering on, is there's no end to these things. One issue gets resolved, but it creates another issue. And if you keep trying to track down all the issues, all the lines of unfinished business, there's no way you're ever going to get out of this process. So you have to learn how to put those things aside, allow certain things to be unfinished. Finish the business in your own mind. In other words, to try to understand why does the mind keep wandering around like this? What is it looking for? Why can't it just stay where it is? This is why I practice concentration, is to experiment in staying in one place. Now, in the process of staying still like this, you begin to see exactly what pushes the mind to go here, go there. Even little things like pains in the body. or ideas that you'd like to work through. Here you are trying to focus the mind on the breath, and other things come up. So you have to learn to resist the impulse to go wandering after them, to stay right here with the breath. Breath comes in, no, it's coming in. Breath goes out, no, it's going out. And do what you can to get interested in right here. Because if you're going to understand anything in the practice, you've got to understand it right here. All the processes that we need to understand in order to put an end to suffering are things that are happening right here, right now. The Buddha uses the word sankara, fabrication. There's bodily fabrication, which is the breath. There's verbal fabrication, which is directed thought and evaluation. In other words, the type of thinking that leads to sentences in the mind. You direct your thoughts to a particular topic, and then you come up with a comment on it. And then there's mental fabrication, perceptions, feelings. These are the processes that underlie samsara, this process of wandering on. It all comes down to some pretty basic things, and yet we're very good at elaborating on them. And so when we meditate, we turn around and we try to get good at not elaborating. When you see the process of fabrication, see it just as that. Here's a process of putting things together and creating issues. If you get caught up in the issues, you're, there's no end to things. But if you simply watch, oh, this is how this comes together, this is how that comes together, then it falls apart. 
then those issues lose a lot of their allure, a lot of their interest, because you see how artificial the whole thing is. You try to dig down, why is it the mind keeps running out, creating these things? The Buddha said it's ignorance. Ignorance of what? Ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. We can listen to the Four Noble Truths, people can tell them to you, but that doesn't wipe out your ignorance. What he's talking about is seeing stress as it's happening, seeing the origination of stress as it's happening. The cessation, the path to its sensation as these things are happening. In other words, see the process of fabrication in these terms and not in terms of the issues that you could create, the products they create. Just keep looking at the process, at the process. So when there's a distraction from your, from the breath, remember it's a process. You can turn it into a thing. You can turn it into issues if you want to. But at some point it should occur to you, why? Why bother? If you can just watch these things as a process of stress arising, stress passing away, it makes them a lot less interesting. A lot of people have objected to the idea of translating dukkha as stress, but it brings everything down a notch or two. And it's all the interesting issues in our minds, all our fascinating neuroses. If you look at them simply as stress, they're a lot less fascinating. There was a cartoon in the New Yorker years back, a man sitting meditating in his living room. His wife was in another room at the door to the living room talking with her friend. She said, Harold used to be such an interesting neurotic until he took up yoga. The implication being, of course, that once he became practiced yoga, he became a lot boring, a lot more boring. But that's one of the whole purposes of meditation, is the issues that tended to enthrall you before. And you simply see them simply as processes, a process of stress coming together, stress falling apart. They're a lot less enthralling, they have a lot less power over the mind. This is why the Buddha recommended the Four Noble Truths as the view that leads to liberation. Once you see things in these terms, then all the other terms that we used to apply, that this was me, this is mine, these are my ideas, these are my, my emotional problems, my relationships, my whatever. Once you take away the my, they become a lot less interesting. When they're empty of those concepts, what's there left? Nothing much, just stress coming together, stress falling apart. The trick is learning to see everything that arises and passes away in the mind, simply as these processes. Once you get more and more sensitive to this, then you, you find them less interesting. You find yourself less likely to get pulled away. And then you're more in charge. When the time comes there really are issues you have to think about, okay, you can think. But you don't have to be thinking all the time. It's like the difference between on-demand water heaters and big tank water heaters. On-demand water heaters heat the water only when you need it. The tanks keep the water hot all day long in case you might happen to need it at any particular time, which of course is a huge waste. It's like leaving your car engine running in the garage in case you might want to jump in the car at any moment. And it's the same with the mind. We keep spinning, 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 keep wandering around. We keep samsara-ing all the time. 
just in case there might be something worthwhile. But so much of what we spin out like this is, is pretty worthless when you come right down to it. And when you see it as a lot of worthless suffering, why bother? There's so much unnecessary suffering that goes on in the world, so much pointless suffering. Why well, keep adding more? Because our wandering around, it's not just an issue of our causing ourselves suffering, it causes other people suffering as well. That's why we have that contemplation on the requisites. Every evening, every evening we keep repeating this, reflecting on the fact that this body requires that we have to take food, clothing, shelter, medicine. And it's not only a burden for us in the searching, but it's a burden for other people in their providing. Not only other people, other beings, all kinds of animals. This is why when we stop samsara it's a gift not only to ourselves but to the people around us. It's not selfish to stop doing this. If you thought of samsara as a place where people are suffering and it might seem heartless to want to get out, but if you see it as a process, a process that's causing yourself suffering, a process that's causing other people suffering, the more people who stop doing the process, the better everybody's going to be, the happier everyone's going to be. Those distractions come up in the meditation. Learn how to look at them simply as processes of constellations of stress coming together, falling apart. without anything of any real enduring essence. And that way this tendency the mind has to keep wandering around, wandering around, can be brought under control. And we get more and more familiar with in the present moment. It can open up to the other dimensions that can be touched here, that are obscured by the wandering around. So this is why we do this practice, keep coming back to the present moment, coming back to the present moment, sticking with the breath, learning to get interested in the breath. The breath, of course, is a process too, but it's a process that helps anchor us in the present moment. The more you explore this process, the more firmly grounded you get here. Your center of gravity gets lower and lower, so it's more and more difficult for you to be tipped over into other processes. So have some respect for concentration as we chant so often, This it's the practice that helps bring this wandering mind into line. You can cut back on the, all the suffering and stress and burdens that come with trying to wander around all the time of being unable to just stay very still right here and really see what's going on. 